Xin Chao from Hoi An in central Vietnam. We've been in Vietnam a full month already with two months remaining. In this video, we'll take you on a tour of two different accommodations in Hoi An and introduce you to a pair of travelers we're sure you'll find interesting. As many of you know, Hoi An is one of our favorite places to stay. All this week, Vietnam is celebrating Lunar New Year, which is a huge holiday. And this year, we get to enjoy it with two of our friends and fellow travelers. We met Regina through our blog because she lives in another one of our favorite places to stay long term, Cuenca, Ecuador. She often travels with her friend, a fellow American living in Mexico, Linda Rose. We want you to hear from them about life abroad and visiting Vietnam for the first time. Well, I like the affordability of Ecuador compared to what my budget would be in the United States. It's easy for me, it's calm, it's walkable. I feel safe there as a single person now. There is a lot of free entertainment that's offered, cultural activities, museums. Fresh food. Every other day I walk to the market, I have three near me. It certainly is a more tranquil lifestyle. That's it's, for sure. For me, it's it seems a lot like the 50s. There are corner stores, mm -hmm. individual relationships with the local merchants rather than going to a big box store, less chaotic, less bills. Public transportation is a big plus. I walk to the corner and I get on the bus for a quarter. It's the best of both worlds in that if you need a mall or want to go to a mall, it's there for you. Travel is so easy. You can travel by bus, you can fly fairly inexpensively. Well, we've been traveling together for 10 or 12 years. We're friends of many years, and she is the recreational director, and I'm the booking agent. So it works out that way for us. However, I've seen and we've met many solo travelers. Yes. They seem to get along great. I'm not a solo traveler. I've done both. I like it that the person I travel with, Linda Rose, does the finances. She pays all the restaurant checks. She just tells me when I need to put my contribution into our travel purse. As a single traveler, I think it's really important to do your research so you don't ever feel stranded. So you're both well-traveled. What was it like to plan a trip and to be in Vietnam? I never expected that people would be so welcoming and so friendly. For me, going to Thailand and coming to Vietnam has been the most exciting, awesome trip we have ever taken. Everything's new. This is the first time I've been faced with not knowing the language and not being able to communicate easily. The money, I'm still confused. The courtesy and the friendliness of the people certainly was, made us feel welcome immediately. The food probably is the most wonderful thing we've experienced. New spices, new things, new vegetables, fruits. We don't even know if it's a vegetable or a fruit. I would say do your research. <sighs> but leave your itinerary rather loose. Yeah. Because you'll find recommendations from other travelers that you meet along the way and just be prepared to be open-hearted and open-minded. Try not to have a tight schedule like we normally do, but not in this country. Just be loose and free. And we happen to be here during Tet. It's festive and people are celebrating and families are getting together. When we arrived at the airport mm -hmm. and it was pretty chaotic and I think sometimes you just need to step back in and, and, and wait to decide or have a shuttle waiting there for you from your hotel so they can at least ease you in. Oh, and get yourself a SIM card. That's always important. So you can use Google Maps and other tools to help you get around the country. It's been, it's been a blast. Vietnam is definitely a country I would come back to. I'm not a member of the tourism department, but I could be. Next, we'll show you two types of accommodations for visitors in Hoi An. Homestays or family-run guest houses are very common throughout Vietnam. This is where we lived and worked for three weeks. Wi-Fi, hot water, drinking water, bicycles and breakfast are included here, and the family lives on the same property. We are moving into an apartment tomorrow, so I wanted to show you the homestay that we've been in for the last three weeks. 
So this is a wet bath. And the room comes with zippers, storage, beds, entertainment system, mini fridge, some treats, instant coffee, tea. We had them bring an extra table so we could both have desks. And we're basically in a neighborhood. Um, down there, there is a pool. So the local host family lives here and six guest rooms are on the other side. Breakfast is included every morning as well as bicycles. Homestays average 15 to 25 US dollars a night. We also find self-catering furnished apartments in Hoi An through Facebook groups. This one rents for about 330 US dollars, including internet, but water and electricity are paid separately. There are nice views of the rice fields and it's further from the center of town, so you definitely want to have a motorbike or bicycle to get around. Well, that's it. To submit any questions or suggestions for our upcoming videos, be sure to join the Intentional Travelers membership subscription. We'd like to thank our founding members who made this video possible. Jackie Grant. Steve Brink. Kenneth Navrin. Catherine Yolans. Tara Hathaway. Auntie Jolene Chang. Tammy Pitsley. John Granger. Paul and Esther Butcher. Pat Old Mason. Ella Leeper. Captain Lawrence Crompton, who we just actually met here in Hoi An. Kat Goldberg. Lori Sprinkle. And Ryland Seeliger. Thank, thank you. you.